hello there. My name is Molly Hanna. Um, I am a wood carver. I do make a living at it. I'm one of the very few around that are able to do that. Um, thank you for inviting me here today. This is really enjoyable. Um, what we're going to do today is talk about a little bit about um, cottonwood bark, how we carve it, where it comes from. Um, I'll give you a few tips here and there on maybe tricks, tricks that can help you. Uh, I've been carving bark, oh, maybe about five years now. The very first year I started, I started with this piece right here. It's a very large piece. Um, I didn't know any wood carvers per se, had never competed, um, entered in Dayton. They accepted me off photos, entered six category or seven categories. I brought home six ribbons. This is one of my first place. So it was, it, it was a very enjoyable. I never knew there were, there were other people in the world that did stuff like this. It's very fun. How we're going to start off here, I know a lot of people, and I've heard from several people even today, when you look at a piece of wood, you're, you're having a hard time seeing what is in the wood. These small ones, this is an example of what we did today. These small ones, basically it's a one-day project. You learn the basics. You have a roof, you have a ledge, you have a door, and you have a window. I do like to add rocks on the small one. If you don't like rocks, you can add steps. That's a, all the basics in that. You can add from there. You can add layers. You can add multiple roofs. You can leave bark on, as in this example. You leave the bark on. I still have the shingles in there still the texture, have all the basic components, your roof, and I'm going to add an open door on this. And, it, you know, it's very basic. That's what the bark on. I, I do not make hardly any where I strip all the bark off. I've been doing woodwork my whole life, so I'm, I really don't care to paint, stuff like that. I would rather just leave it natural. Any scrap that you get off, you keep. You Christmas ornaments, people love them. You get thick ones, make a Santa face. People love that. Uh, I make an average of 120 of these a year. I give away, I would say, an average of 70 to 80, and I just sell the rest. So what we're going to look at is what are you seeing in a piece of wood and how do you see it? When you look at this piece of wood and I look at this piece of wood, I'm looking for a roof line right off the bat. I would like a roof line. If you don't see a roof line like this, you flip it over. Maybe now, just even, and I'm looking down upon it, uh, I can see a roof line and a chimney coming out of this piece of wood. Here's the chimney, here's the roof. That would be a basic on every single piece of wood you pick up. Where's the roof line? Where's your ledge gonna be for your door? I focus, when I put in a door, that is almost my focal point. Everything almost revolves around that door. A gnome's gotta come in somewhere. You can flip it around, now I see multiple you could do multiple things with this. Add rocks in the bottom. This is, uh, this is a nice little, if you don't want to do a house, you can flip that piece of wood this way. You could make uh, abstract fish. Animals come out really nice in cottonwood bark just because you, they're visual. You can see them and I, I do I do basically everything in this. Whenever you're gonna work with a piece of cottonwood, the first thing you wanna do, you really wanna make sure it's flat. This is only bark, this is not wood. When you look at the end, it's grown in layers, all layers. It's not like wood. When you work with this, 
if you turn your knife instead of going straight, it will chip out. That's just how it is, it's layered. When you put glue on, you always put the glue into the layers, not on the top of the, the only thing the top of the surface does make it not chip out the very top. It's always applying to the layers. <clears throat> it's a piece of bark. We gotta make that flat. I was lucky enough to acquire, acquire a very small, <laughs> very small knife here. I don't use it on these small ones, it's useless. I always have a rough out knife. Rough out knife, detail knife. Whatever knife you choose is good with me. Everybody has their own knives. All you need is a point on your finish knife. knife. That's pretty much all you need for your finish. You have to keep them sharp because this is bark. As this tree is growing and the environment, it accumulates dirt all kinds of junk in there. It will dull your tools faster than a piece of wood. So you always have to keep sharpening your tools. There's no quicker way to get cut than a dull tool. Always wear a glove. Basically, these are my two tools that I use right here and right here. You can do almost your whole project with just minimal, minimal tools. That's one reason I like this too, because, you know, it's minimal. You're gonna want a set or just any, I use these little files. Everybody, almost everybody has some somewhere. Otherwise, Harbor Freight is one of my favorite stores. I know they have it. <laughs> I always carry a little bit of sandpaper. I know woodcarvers say if you have a sharp knife, you don't need sandpaper. Well, I've been a woodcarver a long time and I'm gonna say that's the wrong answer. There is, you can use sandpaper just like you can use glue. I'm gonna want some toothbrushes. This is a, this is a good way <clears throat> because this is bark. It's hairy. It will, it will have fuzz on the inside. No better way to get it off, scrub it off, good to go. So I always want to carry toothbrushes. Okay, so I'm going to do one of these pretty fast. So first off, what we want to do, we would like this flat on the back. So all you got to do is make it as flat as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect because as you carve, it will change. My roof line, as I look at this, I'm looking at a roof line up here because of the way this is twisted. Whenever you're doing bark carving, if you want whimsical bark carving, whimsical is wavy. It's all soft. It's not points and angles. It's a soft. So when I look at this, I'm looking at a whimsical. It already curves for me. It's talking to itself, to me. So I'm going to make, make us a little roof up here. Next thing I'm looking at, when I'm looking at this piece of wood, I'm looking at where's my ledge going to be. I have to have that door in. I know what my roof is going to be. Okay, so there is basically the outline of my roof already. It wasn't that hard. Go with the contour of the wood. Makes it easy. Next, pencil is your friend. I'd like a ledge in here and I'd like a door and a window. It's small enough. You really, you know, you can't add too much in here. I'm going to put it down here just so I have a little room between my, the eave of my, of my roof and the ledge. You have to have room in there to put a door and a window. These little ones, it's really easy. You always put them towards the bottom. I would suggest your first cut is straight in. Make an angle cut to it only on the front edge until you put your eaves in on your roof. Then you know exactly, maybe I want my ledge to go upward, maybe it needs to go down, maybe I'm gonna add stairs. You really never know until you get 
the eaves on that roof put in. So there right now is my ledge. I know that somewhere from here to here, I'm going to look, I, need, I really would like the um, eaves on this house. Always let the wood talk to you. When I look at this side of it, I can already see that right coming this way, the wood is already forming itself. It's already forming that eave. So I'm just going to take it on like that and take it. This side, you really can't see much. It's just the way it is. So I'm just going to draw a line in and call it good because they, these do not have to be perfect. You don't have to have any rhyme or reason. And that's probably why I like it so much. I am kind of a, I am, I'm a wood carver. I travel, I teach, I, it's what I do, artist. Okay, so now I have the eaves to my house. Now I can tell where is where is my ledge going to go according to my eaves. That's the way, best way to see it. Whenever you do a piece of artwork, a carving, or anything, you always look for balance. You always would like your, your piece balanced, whether it's balanced with shape, bark left on the outside. You're, you're always looking. When I'm looking at this, I'm looking at maybe I want this to come up this way now. And we'll take this straight across. Okay, that looks all right. So now you can see this is really starting to take shape. I've got my ledge. By looking at it, I already know where my door is going to be. I got the shape of my roof. Whenever you're doing this, you always make what I call make your piece dance. Spin it around. You have to look at every angle, every way around. When I'm looking at it this way, it's all one plane. The, the front of the house is sticking out way past the eaves. You know, that's not going to work. So now we're going to start really making this take shape. When I work these, when I first started, because I really had, you really need ideas, stuff like that, I came up with making an idea book. An idea book can come out of anywhere. I, myself, do not have time to get on the internet. Internet is an excellent place for information, pictures, all of that. I, I, I myself don't have time. So what I do is if I see something in a doctor's office, in the laundromat, wherever, I tear the picture out. <laughs> and I paste it in a book. I have roof lines. I have how, bricks, if you would like to lay bricks. Every kind of house, whimsical houses, um, uh, everything you can imagine how to make stairs, what a piece of, what a log looks like out in the woods, an actual log. Some people forget that a log is round, you know. This is a good thing to do for yourself, just for your own information. Sometimes I'm not sure what to do. I, I do have a degree in uh, architectural, structural <laughs> engineering, and believe it or not, sometimes I, f I just go blank. So those are really handy little things to do is use reference materials. Sometimes if you're down by Lake Michigan a lot, if I see a house I really like, I will stop and take a picture of the part of the house that I like. Rarely do I pick, take a picture of a whole house. Um, those are good reference materials. Okay. And it's taken shape. Now this is really starting to take shape. So when I look at this, my roof is now sticking out. My main core, the body of the house, is further in and out goes my ledge. 
So now already there's a shape of a house. When I look at it this way, I have, I have back cut on the bottom and on the top to make it look round. This plane right here is still there and there. It just looks like it's really not. A lot of bark carving is illusion. If you learn how to undercut, back cut, you have to take very little wood off and, it's, and it really creates depth. So we're just gonna shape that up just a little bit. Whenever you do a roof, I do a certain kind of shingle just because um, I like it, I guess. It's something I learned how to do on my own and it's just a pretty shingle. You basically can do anything that you choose to do on these homes. They're whimsical. They're not accurate. They're, you do not have to be structurally sound. I encourage my students not to make square windows. You know, we don't want to be normal, you know, whatever normal is. Square is not whimsical. Okay, so we'll clean that up. Okay, so now we have an outline of a house. We have to figure out where am I going to put that door? Where are the windows going to go? Am I really going to leave the roof like that? There's still a ton of questions that you have to ask yourself at this point. Next, I would say I'm going to add me a door, add a window, just to look at it. Sometimes things change. These chip out. If you don't like change or are expecting to do a certain something, you may not want to bark carve because it chips out. If you're not right on the glue, even if you are on the glue, it chips out. You have to learn to work around it. The best kind of wood carver is the one that can fix their own mistakes. So that is, that is the, the best advice. I, you learn to fix your own mistakes and you're good to go. So I'll put a little window in there. I sketch. Some people do not sketch on their wood. You might as well. It's wood. You can always cut it off. If I use these white art erasers. These are really nice to use on the wood. They don't use, they don't leave the yellow film and the orange film that pencils do. Um, you can spray finish and, it, and this doesn't hurt it. Sometimes some erasers will leave a film and the finish will bubble a little bit. Uh, these work really nice and they're, they're relatively cheap. Okay, so I have my door and my window sketched in, you know. Now I'm gonna look at that roof. I wanna start bringing this all together. All I really have to do is clean it up. I kinda like the way it looks. I like sweeping motion just because it's whimsical. I'd like to leave some of that bark, I guess, looks kind of cool. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, so now I've got a basic shape going on of the roof. Now I'm going to add, draw in all my shingles. And that's, you can draw any shingles. You could leave the roof it, bear an example right here I didn't even put shingles on it I sanded it and it looks kind of cool so I left it um, you can have rounded shingles with no texture uh, the texture in my opin opinion will really, really make it stick out. Texture always makes stuff stick out better. Because cottonwood bark can be so thin, it, it's the illusion of creating depth that makes the piece look good. So my roof line, I'm cutting, I'm cutting deep into that. I want it to stick out. When I put these on, 
my shingles and texture them, they're really going to look deep. That's an objective. This is not a big piece of wood. Okay, so we'll draw those on quick. So we're to the shingles. We got our doors drawn on. We got a window drawn on. We get our shingles drawn on. A trick with shingles. Hold your piece upside down with the top of the house towards you. If you're right-handed, when you, you're going to make an undercut, when you make that undercut, it's so much easier to do it coming towards you because your hand already wants to do that. So it's already in the position to make that cut. I make all my cuts. I like the sweeping mo motion, of course. A good trick, not to, it's a bad habit to get into, is to try to pull your wood off. If you can't go like that, you have to recut it. You pull this off and it's gonna chip out because it's in layers. So there's my first cut already, but you know, it doesn't look very pronounced to me. I would really like it to just look more pronounced. The more depth, I'm at, and I'm not taking off very much. The more depth you create, the better it's going to look. A lot of people are scared to go deep. If you're scared to go deep, then don't go deep because, you, you know, it's all up to you, whatever you decide you'd like to do. I've got a good depth going on. This edge, this horizontal edge, looks like it's going to start chipping out now to me. Trick. Glue is your friend at this stage. Once you get that outer bark off, this is your friend. We don't glue on the top side, we glue on the layers. So we glue everything from underneath. And that'll hold that whole edge on as you carve. Great. This is just regular super glue from a dollar store, Dollar General. You get two of them in a pack for a buck. I buy four or five packs at a time because you can never have too much glue. <laughs> uh, once I learned that you were allowed to use glue when you carve, <laughs> when I started, I didn't know they had rules that you could use glue. But now that I know the rule, a glue's your friend. So you're gluing on the underside. Wherever you glue, I want to glue this edge. I'm going to glue on the top because we want it to sink into those layers and hold that piece together. When you put finish on this, you won't even see the glue, which is the nice part. Okay. Get this other side hat. Okay, so now I'm going to start because we got the, the roof kind of done out now. I usually like everyone, if you're going to glue, you glue all at once and then you set your piece down. But I mean, I've done this so many times that <laughs> and I don't have time. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask at any time. Pardon? Oh. Safety first. I'm sorry. I told you guys that. I, I am one that I learned without a glove. Um, I'm getting better at using a glove. I did learn how to use chaps after dropping some uh, tools into my thigh. Um, normally, I'm walking around with I'm walking around the table with students. Today is kind of the first day that I just kind of sat around and. Normally, I'm walking around, talking, and carving all at the same time. Um, okay, so I got those done, and you clean up your edges. Just I kind of just run the toothbrush around it every so often. It just makes it uh, so you can see more clearly. 
Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I, w I would like to start the door and the window and the shingles. I've already glued this edge. Before you start actually making individual shingles, glue that edge. It, it's worth it in the end. No matter what you, how strong you think this is, it's, it's not strong enough. When I'm looking at this and things to glue at this point, this front piece right in here, it looks like it's all going to break out. But I kind of like the color. I'd like to leave it in there. So we're going to just pretty much glue it all on there. And hopefully, as you carve, as I'm going through this, it's not going to break off. Okay. So now I'd like to do the window and the door. I, myself, I like to take this glue, run around right on right on the lines. What this I have found does, when you score this, you're really not going to cut in on the first time, you're just going to score it. It will not chip out on the top. Whew. Another safety thing, when you're using this super glue, you have to be careful because the vapors will get you. Not so much breathing them, but they'll start burning your eyes bad. Um, basically, all it's like I did, you just move it away from your face, and you're good to go. Okay, I'm not going to wait for it to dry, so I just have to. Hardly ever. Not my. This knife blade right here. I scraped my. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um, sandpaper I use in the car. Like 120 grit works really well. 320 really makes your fingers soft after you 120 them. So let you know, I don't know who carries sandpaper in their car, but I do.